Good morning. Good morning. Are you going to tell them good morning? Oh, good morning. You recording right? Yep. You always hit record and I don't even know it. I told you if you were ready and you said yeah and I hit record right after that. Who well, did it? Yeah, I did. Good morning. We're not talking about anything today. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's a uh, Tuesday morning. And, uh, oh, um, it was a crazy day. It's morning. How can it be a crazy day? It was a crazy day yesterday. Oh. Oh, I thought you were going to talk about it. You can't tell him it was a crazy day and just stay quiet. Like, like what? Like, did a bear attack us or did a, I mean, you can't just leave people in suspense. Okay, I went to go see my um, my neurosurgeon yesterday, you guys, and you know, as as I've been telling you guys that um, I was supposed to get my surgery date for the third brain surgery, um, and I kind of left there feeling not hopeful and you know um and not getting direct answers i'm feeling a little confused and i came home and you know i looked to my husband and i felt really discouraged really really discouraged about a lot of things and when you go in and and i guess in a sense i felt really good that my doctor was uncertain about certain things um he was uncertain about the surgery um he wanted a second opinion so he's sending me to uh ucsf Mm -hmm. he's sending me to ucsf in san francisco uh to get another second opinion uh with a, another neurosurgeon there about a different, possibly a different procedure, um, because my ventricles may be a little too small. Well, the same procedure, but same just procedure, a different, is, better instruments. Better, yeah, better instruments. <clears throat> um, and because he was unsure of himself um, doing the procedure himself, and you know, and and. And it just, I don't know, just his uncertainty, it made me feel really awkward because, you know, he's the one that did my my last brain surgery and he just was not the same. The confidence just didn't seem the same. So it made me feel a certain way and I started to feel very, very uncertain and I kind of left there. Um just not feeling hopeful and I came home and you know it did bring tears to my eyes and I kind of just looked at my husband and I said I'm done I, I'm, I'm, I'm done with all of this I want to be done with everything I want to I don't want to take any of these meds anymore I don't want to I don't want to do this anymore I want to I need to change something drastically. Um, Something has to give. And, you know, I had noticed that he had been reading a book, a book on on natural, what was it that you were reading? Oh, I don't know. It's over there. (laughs) Yeah, it was a book on, 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 on health. It was two Christian doctors wrote it, and we met them at the conference. Yeah. And um, remember, they, they signed it to us. Mm-hmm. And today I was I was cleaning up my library, and that book stood out to me. So I started reading it. And I it. didn't realize you had been reading that. And then here yeah. I am telling him, you know, something has to change. But if I make this change, you know, I know that I'm going to go through it. I know that I'm going to have to, um, I'm going to stop a lot of this medication and, and I'm going to go through the withdrawals of the medication. I'm going to go through a lot of pain. Um, 
you know, because it's a lot of brain medication and stuff mm. like that that I've been taking for many years. Well, you're not you're not on pain meds. You're not no, on... no, no pain meds or anything like that. But it's it's medication that um, has affected you know my brain and stuff like that. So, but I'm I'm ready to to get off of this stuff, you know, and 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 um, you know it's it's gonna it's gonna take a lot, and I'm just I'm ready to make a change and and uh, see what happens but um i don't i don't think i want another brain surgery and um and maybe i don't know maybe even this i have a feeling that maybe the word that he's going to share today is maybe going to enlighten you don't even know what i'm going to talk about uh, you yet. know <laughs> you know it's funny i don't know why but i don't know what he's going to talk about but I'm just hoping that whatever he does talk about, that whatever the Lord has placed in his heart is really going to enlighten, um, it's really going to enlighten the load in my heart today. <clears throat> because I need that. So. Well, that puts a lot of pressure on me. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that would be nice. So... Today, uh, I want to, um, you can look at it two ways with this verse. It can be very somber or it can be an eye opener. You know, it depends on how you want to take it. Uh, but it's actually in Second Corinthians. Oops, now I hit the camera. <laughs> Usually you do. I know. You I should... hit everything. Uh, Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. Now, I want to quickly want to get into the scripture because I, 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 there's a lot of things I want to say about it. And it says, um, Paul, Paul's writing this to the church in Corinth. And he tells them, actually, let me read one and two. The main one is the, the, sec, the, the, the end of two, but I want to read one and two. And Paul says, we then, as workers together, because we're all workers. That's uh, like when you see the working ants. Yeah. You know, we're all workers together with him. Also plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. You know what grace means? Grace means uh, when you get something you don't deserve. So just because salvation is free, we don't cheapen it. It's, it's free not because it's cheap. It's free because somebody else paid a heavy price for it. Uh, so we don't receive the grace of God in vain. Verse 2 says, For he says, In an acceptable time I have heard you, and in a day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the accepted now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. You know, and I say this often at church, a lot of times when I when I preach, at the end of service, especially when I have visitors, I say you know, who here would like to surrender their life to the Lord Jesus Christ? Because tomorrow's not promised. Today is the day of salvation. <clears throat> and I say that, um, and I don't mean, uh, I don't in any way mean to scare anyone. Uh, but the fact is, we don't know what tomorrow brings. The truth. You know, I remember when I was a kid, right here in Stockton in Charter Way, I went to this church. I grew up in church, never accepted Christ till I was 32. But my mom was a Christian, uh, and then my dad. And I remember uh, they had this revival. And uh, back then, it was a lot of gangbangers. Uh, it's a different breed now. The gangbangers from back then, um, which youngsters would call OGs now, you know, but it was really like the Wild West out here in Stockton back then in, in the 80s. Was it like that movie, Blood In, Blood Out? Yeah. Uh, it was bad. Um, you know, and I don't think the the young people now have no comprehension of what gangs were like in the '80s. It literally was the Wild West. That was before, um, you know, forensics and all that, and people were just killing people left and right. Anyways, um, there was a revival, and it was a call of salvation. And I remember this mother; she was so happy because her son was there, and he was a gangbanger, straight gangbanger. And he asked for prayer. He actually went up to the front mm -hmm. to prayer. And they asked him, would you like to accept 
the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart today. And he says, you know what? I want to change. I really do want to change. But not today. I'll come back next week, I promise. He promised to come back the next Sunday. And um, what happened was the next week came, that Saturday, before service, he was at Church's Chicken, which is still there in Charterway. And he was in there, and um, somebody went in with a shotgun and shot him point blank. Mm. This young man died with the promise that he would get saved the next day. And I know people watching this, that's not you. You're not living a gangster lifestyle. Maybe you are. I don't know. <clears throat> but nevertheless, it doesn't have to be a shotgun. Um, you never know. You never, never know. One thing, one thing you do know, and one thing I know, is that I have a day and you have a day. And I don't say that, to, like I said, don't take this in the wrong way. But the fact is that every single moment you have could be your last. You know, I learned this really early on when, when I was taken to prison. Here, you know, I remember Aaliyah was one years old. My daughter just had her birthday. And a week later, like that, boom, I get taken. You know, so all of a sudden I'm, I'm away from my children. I'm away from my, my family my mom, my dad, you know, and, you know, just living life like normal, you know, your, your brother, you know, who's incarcerated, he was out and all of a sudden, now he's been gone how many years? Well, 16, they gave him 25 years. Yeah. So just like that, right? Mm -hmm. Just like that. So I know that's different from death, but nevertheless, I, I, it's the same effect because to be incarcerated literally feels like you're in a coffin and life just keeps on going, you know? So, um, oh man, I'm getting a call. I'm gonna have to continue this, babe. Okay, we are back. I had to stop. We had to stop the, oh, we had to stop the video. Um, and you were talking about the M&Ms. I'm sorry that I interrupted you. Yeah, the M&Ms. I was using that as an example because no matter, I guess the moral of the story is, <clears throat> if you like M&Ms, no matter how big the bag, you're eventually going to hit the bottom of the bag. Each M&M you take gets you closer to the bottom. So in the same way, whether you have one day or a thousand days left with those that you love, every day that passes is one less day, mm -hmm. you know? So <clears throat> that's my, that's my whole thing is that's what I'm trying to say is that you need to be able to realize that and take advantage of the people that you love. Yeah. You know, there's times <clears throat> because I, I, and, and I know a lot of people understand that maybe you, you've lost people in your life already, so you get this, you know. And there's times, and don't get me wrong, I don't, I don't think, I'm not always like um, a negative thinker, but the reality is uh, there's times where, or we're laughing or we're watching something or hanging out, and I know I'm back in my mind, I'm not always going to have this. We're not always going to have this. You know, uh, when I'm with loved ones or my parents or or with my brothers, one of us has got to go first. You know, I have three brothers, there's four of us, and there's going to become a day when there's going to be three. And maybe it's going to be me or maybe it's going to be them, but that's just the reality of life. It is the reality. I guess like even today, I guess I looked at it as a blessing in disguise as well. And, and I guess you can say I kind of appreciated it when the doctor um or yesterday because you know but i guess I, I can say that i kind of appreciated that he was really honest when he was telling me um that he did not see himself fit at the moment to really go on to do this surgery and everything and i thought to myself <clears throat> maybe it's not a good idea for him to do the surgery yeah. and he was being honest and I was kind of happy that he was being honest um, about not 
feeling comfortable with him doing this surgery. And he said, you know, because of all the complications that could take place with the hemorrhaging and this. Well, he and says, that. he goes, I don't want to hurt you. Where if he was just a selfish surgeon. He would have just did it. He would have just did it. You and, know. And, and he would have just, you know, wanted to charge the insurance and he just wanted to do it because some doctors just want to do surgeries. And, and he even said it. He says, you know, if I was any other doctor, I would have just wanted to cut into your head and just get it done and over with, you know, and just do it. And then he said he was, he was, you know, I made an oath. Yeah. You know, I made an oath that I would help people. Yeah. So... And, and that, that meant a lot to me. And I and it, it made me think about, like, man, it, it made me just think about, like, how precious life is. And, you know, he didn't take that for granted and made me not want to take anything for granted either. And I was grateful <coughs> and gracious for that. And I, that's why I came home and I just thought to myself, if he was gracious enough... Um, to to look at that in that perspective, I came home and I thought to myself, you know what, I want to make a change. I want to do something differently because I need to put the effort for my life as well. I need to do something different. I need to try um, because life is precious. And if I can do something different, um, then I, I need to I need to make that effort as well and see what can be done differently. Because there's a reason why um, that happened. There's a reason why I believe that. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> you know, like the scripture was saying, and I know we're talking a little bit aside from salvation, but. It brings to remembrance that the fact is the reason it's saying that today is the day of salvation on the, on this verse. Um, where is it at? Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. <clears throat> it's indirectly saying that because tomorrow is not promised. Yeah. You know, so that's why I remember um, telling a brother because he says, man, because I used to preach in the yard, in the prison yard. Mm -hmm. And it would be like, six brothers sometimes would show up to hear the sermon, you know. Other than, I mean, I'd be in the yard and people were walking the track and stuff and exercising and playing basketball, but there'd be like six brothers showing up. <clears throat> and um, he would, he told me, he goes, one day, I think we're having lunch, he goes, David, um, he goes, you, when you preach to us, you preach like as if we're a thousand people. You know, and, and I told them, I said, well, because I am. I said, if, if, I said, this is, at that time, I was just young in the Lord, young in, in preaching. <clears throat> and I thought, Lord, um, like, I can't remember exactly the verse I'm thinking in my head, but basically, whether it's six people or 6,000 people, the gospel still needs to be preached. The message still needs to be preached. And I say that to say this, is that every Sunday when I preach, I don't know if it's going to be my last, and I don't know if it's going to be your last. I don't know if it's going to be my last chance to do one of these videos. I don't know if it's going to be your last chance to ever hear the gospel or hear the call of Christ. Mm -hmm. and, and that carries weight because I'm like, Lord, if this was my last time, I'm going to share you. Let me do it effectively. Mm -hmm. And if this is the last time somebody's going to hear me, Lord, let it penetrate the heart. Give it my all. Yes, give yeah. it my all. And so if that makes sense, why not give it your all in your marriage? Or give it your all with your children? And everything or, that and, you do. And everything that you yeah. do, because you don't know if it's going to be your last. And you can look at this video as negative. Or you can look at it in the other flip side is that you don't want to be the person later on that looks back and says, I should have, I could have. Yeah, do it now. Yeah. You know, many times people say, oh, man, I remember the good old days. Remember when and, and but here's the thing. If you go back to that time, you didn't realize you were in the golden age of, of your memories or whatever. Um, what if you're in the golden age right now? You know? Who knows? What if 
what if House of Rest is, is eventually going to be a bigger church? And I don't know. And and that's why I don't I don't concentrate because it's like how do I know that I'm not going to look back and say, man, back in 2019 when the church was small, we would pack out and people would be standing. Mm -hmm. How am I not going to say, man, those that was the good times. I don't want to do that. I just want to enjoy the good times now as they're happening. Yeah. You know, so, um, guys, today's the day of salvation. You don't know, and I don't know. So, you know, treat life like the precious thing that it is. Treat salvation like the precious thing that it is. And even though we will have eternity in the kingdom of God, you will never have your relationships here on earth ever again the same. This is this is a, a, a gift yes. that we're given. You know, and um I guess it's that's about it. I don't know. Yeah. I don't even know if we said anything impactful. I pray that we did. I pray that we always do, yeah. you know, and even if it's if it's us sharing something intimate, you know, uh, in regards to our lives or anything, we always pray that it is impactful um, into your life yeah. and we're <clears throat> speaking life into you. Um, yeah. Why? Because we love you guys, you know? You know, you know how I convince myself. Some days I, you guys know by now that I, I like cycling. And there's some days where I wake up in the morning with plans to cycle and I don't want to go. And I'm like washing up and you're asleep a lot of times. And, and part of me says, man, don't go. And honestly, this thought comes to my mind is someday, David, you're going to be at an age where you're going to wish you could go riding. I mean, I'm I'm 47. I'm not old, but I'm not young either. And how many how many days do I really have to ride my bike? You know, how many days do I really have? You know, so it's like. And then I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go, because I don't want to think back. I don't want to go, and in, in, in my years where I can't ride, and think back of the regret of the day I should have rode and I didn't. Yeah. That makes sense? Yeah, it does. And do you know how much I wish I can just even get on a bike with you again? You know, how much I, I really miss doing that with you and I'm oh. only, when I'm 44. I'm you surprised know? you did 10 miles. That was awesome. Yeah, I was proud of myself, you know, because I miss doing the normal things, you know? It's 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 hard not to be able to do those things and I miss that. I miss I miss being out there with you. But you know, I'm I'm grateful that um I was able to get out there and to be able to do that. But see that's that's exactly what we mean. Yeah, it it's is. It's like when when you're not able to do the things that you've always been able to do is when you start to realize the things that you actually miss. And when you actually get there and you start to experience that, the things that you used to do and everything is when you actually really realize the things that you're missing. And you won't know until you get there. Yeah. You know, it almost took for me to lose life in order for me to find life, if that makes any sense. And when I started going through a lot of these uh, brain issues and everything, it, it, it was scary for me because I couldn't control them. And sometimes, you know, when you have ailments or when you feel sick, you know, and but you can go take medicine and you can feel better um, is one thing. But when you have issues, when people are sick and they can't control them, when people have cancer, when people have things that they have no control over when they have seizures when they have things that they 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 just can't control them it's a scary situation for someone and you know when they live their life like that that's hard um so live your life like it's i remember there was a book that says live your life like it's your last you know Live your life? 
you know, like live your life to the fullest yeah. every day. Because this life is our last. So was yes. it like live your life every day like it's your last? Like give it to us. Yeah. yeah, that's what I Cause mean. Because everybody's life is your last. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. You're, you're hitting the next, ne- another one. <laughs> that's what I meant. Yeah. So that's what I meant, you yeah. know, because you just can't take anything for granted. You really can't. So homework of the day is uh, call the person you love. Tell them you love them. Tell them you miss them. Spend time with people. Yeah. You know, you can't be stuck on your phone all the time, you know, always on social media or anything. Unless you're watching our videos. <laughs> you know, David and I sometimes will just sit in our living room and we'll, we'll watch TV. You know, we actually we actually sit here sometimes quietly and everything will be off and we'll be conversing. We'll actually have conversations. And we'll be talking about stuff, you know, sit down and converse. Sometimes we'll sit with the kids huh, at the table and mm-hmm. we'll just talk and we'll be talking. Take the time to do stuff and actually talk with one another. Find time to converse and love on one another. Call your parents. Call your children. You know, one thing I admire and I love about that David does and... Every day, even if he doesn't get an answer, because a lot of the time, sometimes he doesn't, but he, he messages his kids every day. He tells us, he tells his children, hello, every day, good night, or he tells his kids he loves them every day, every day. And I see this every day. And you know, that's, that's important. You know, that's, that's a big deal. So just make sure you guys, you know. Give somebody a call. Give somebody a text. You know, something. Yeah. You know, and those in your house, enjoy them. Don't take them for granted. Um, you might walk out of the house and be your last, or they walk out and it's your last. And I'm not speaking that into your life, but it's just the reality of this fallen world. And, um, and life is a beautiful thing that God gives us. So, um. Remember, today's a day of salvation. Yeah. So have a good day yeah. with that. <laughs> All right, guys. God bless you. Is that why you said somber? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right, guys. Bye, guys. Bye.